Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I do apologise, I wasn't going to release a video tonight, but I was going through GW's articles when I was having a two minute break from editing the next Blood Bowl video, and I saw they've released a new article about the upcoming Blades of Corn release, uh, calling it the uh, Big Changes. Um, I read through it. It's kind of a mixed bag. I think they pulled a duty on us as well. But we're going to go through the article ourselves and just pick out the information and we're going to uh, see what they reckon is going to be the big changes coming to corn. So, before I start, I want to say thank you for everybody that's tuned in. Thank you for everybody who's sharing the channel with their friends and family. And I just want to say thank you again. That's three thank yous you're getting off me already. I haven't even started the video. Before we start, please be aware we have got a Teesprings account. And if you want to support the channel and wear some noob gear, go over to Teesprings, type in noob with a brush, and you will see our t shirts and hoodies there. Hoping in the future that we can get a few hats on there as well because as you will see in all the videos that I've released this I like a, I like to wear a beanie hat so well, With all that said let's get on with the article Right then guys it's All opened up we're gonna go through it now From the get-go GW are promising us that this blades corn is revamping the entire corn army from top to bottom so whether you believe that or not that's what they're promoting but they've told us now they've amended the blood tithe table so they've changed it and tweaked it they've made it a bit more simple on some areas but they've put a few new um well few abilities in there so Right then guys, first one we're going to look at is the Bloody Exemplar. I'm not going to read the bump on it, but basically it's you gain one extra command ability for one blood tithe point. Seems to be the go-to thing for GW at the moment for tables and everything. This bottom run is you get a command ability. Don't get me wrong, it's not as good as Flesh Eater Court or the Loom Kings just by turning up you get um, an extra command ability but it's always there if you need it in a pinch and it's probably going to be seen a lot more than the next one that I'm going to go over now because they've gone from what's down at number one and they're going to tell us what's at number eight and at number eight we have got which is the slaughter triumphant um, if it's been a hard fought out fought battle you're gonna get eight blood tithe points before the end of the game and what it says about you is you can choose this reward once per battle if you do so the, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack makes made with a melee weapon by a friendly cone unit is six that attacks scores two hits on the targets instead of one make a wound roll for each so you've buffed your army basically by your well is it worth eight blood type points i don't think so because basically it's the so it's the ability you get for your blood blood letters or if you roll an unmodified six you get the decapitated and blow but this is army wide you don't have to have blood letters you can have anything is it worth it i have already asked that one no because if you've got eight blood type points you're probably going to be in the later part of the game and you're not going to see much of the benefit of this the gw are going to push this as this is amazing you will get it and it's going to change the course of the game 
bollocks. You're going to get this so late in the game, it's not going to make much of a difference. Perhaps, could have been about the six blood type points. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Am I being a little bit too harsh on the slow, this slaughter triumphant? Or do you agree? It can, for eight blood type points, it's too late to be a game changer. So, yeah, leave your comments down below on this one. Right then, guys, we're going to go from that mixed bag now into something a little bit more useful if you were like me and you want to go into a demon heavy list. I'm going to say demon heavy because it's to do with the locust. It's the locust of fury. They've tweaked it a little bit now, so the ranges have changed. Saying you can re roll hit rolls of one if the attack made. By friendly corn demon units while they are wholly within 12 of any friendly corn demon heroes or wholly within 16 of a corn great demon so it's going to be very useful if you've got a few blood masters out or if you've got skull taker and a few blood masters it's probably going to three to get the biggest range on the abilities i'm going to guess but wholly does make a a big difference it's not you get you could spread it out so wide that you can get two or three people in and that that, that counts so it's going to be a little bit tighter than uh, what other people play but wholly within is the new standard for gw so i can't disagree with this this is seems a little bit more useful i think if you're going to go above a thousand points you are going to go and get a greater demon because that's just going to be the pinnacle of what your army wants to get to. So, to me, I think this is a nice little buff. They've expanded the ranges, so you're not trying to bunch up and keep the whole thing together. You can spread out, you can send packs, different areas. So, I'm happy with this one. This is the plus. The other one was a mixed bag. This is a plus. My right, guys, quick time out to second, cup of tea. Gotta wet the whistle when we're talking about this article. Right. GW have also stated that they've amended the slaughter hosts as well, which are the human elements of the corn army. I gotta guess that they're gonna give us eight tribes. I don't know why eight comes to mind, but uh, it does. And they're going to give them different abilities. It's going to be like the Grand Courts in the Flesh Eater Courts that we recently spoke about. So there's all going to be different ones. There's two examples within the article. One is called the Skull Fiend Tribe, and the other one is called the Reapers of Vengeance. So I got up a ability for the Skull Fiends. It's called For the Brass Citadel. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly model with this command ability. Till the end of that phase, you can re roll hit and wound rolls for attacks made by the friendly Skull Fiend, uh, Skull Fiend tribe Kogarath units within wholly within 10 inches of this model so it's a little buff obviously skull fiends are probably going to be monster reliant if they're going to support the uh, core guards the other thing they could do to support the core guards is probably release the model not in the star collecting box not in a first edition box set release the bloody model it's been out for a few years now and we still not got one so it's a little bit naughty that you're giving them abilities and probably most of the people that are late starters that won't go to ebay hasn't got this model so it seems a bit of a waste so hopefully there's going to be a second wave and kogarats are going to be in that so fingers crossed guys we might actually get the last model 
Right, the second ability they've shown, and this is for the Reapers of Vengeance, is called Mage Eater, where the general can attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase as if it was the wizard. In addition, uh, if this general attempts to unbind a spell on an unmodified unbinding is 8, the spell is successfully unbound and the caster receives d6 mortal wounds because corn hates dirty stinking weakling wizards in my opinion but it's useful as if you were taking uh taking a slaughter horse that's a really good ability to help you get up the board if you're combining this with the what they call it the skull altar the bunny skull altar that they got so or the hutch as I like to call it because it looks like it's got bunny ears on it it looks like it's gonna buff your arm again up the board and beat in the enemy in glorious hand to hand combat just as corn likes it I don't know what gets over me when I talk about corn anyway guys what do you think do you think this is a nice ability do you think it's going to work well with that altar I know we haven't got the rules for the altar yet but I can see this is going to be working well with it because it's only going to be the priests using it so far that from what GW have said so if you're going to, if you're going to get that uh, terrain piece probably this is the tribe to go with right guys we're halfway there we get into the middle of the article and now they're telling us about the changes to the war scrolls where they're simplifying some of the rules for slaughter host in particular there's going to be some updates and as we can all guess there's going to be a few points changes so it's going to be worth picking up a few new uh, war scroll cards they've also stated that they've changed rules for like blood crushers or skull takers sorry blood crushers yes so so many blood so many skulls so much crushing anyway the mighty skull skull crushers they've stated that these guys are going to have a big change they're going to be big him impact hitters now for the army so they reckon it's going to be chances where you could take out ghoul kings on terror geists with the unit of six of these because they've amended murderous charge and let's have a look at murderous charge here we go guys we've got murderous charge murderous charge has been changed a bit from the current edition now because we're going to talk about a change coming in the future uh, after a model in this unit makes a charge move you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll a dice on two plus the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound if this unit has more than one model, roll to determine if mortal wounds are allocated after each model completes its charge move. So you're getting a hit on every model. But do not allocate the mortal wounds until after all the models in the unit have moved. So you've got to create a pool and then dish it out after. If this unit has six or more models, when it makes a charge move, uh, change the mortal wounds inflicted by this ability from 1 to D3. So, murderous charge, if you're lucky enough with your rolls, and I know 2 plus is moderately hard to mess up, so you could be charging in, we'll say if you took six models six d3s and if you're lucky enough to get two or three you're taking out big monstrous units so it's a nice ability it's not something you can guarantee a unit on it's not something you can guarantee winning a game with but it's a nice little buff while you've got it so i can't complain i like it i hope it goes over to the crushers so it's uh, it's going to be army wide uh, only time will tell because we've got 
about a week to wait so bring it on so yeah I'm kind of happy with that just just see what it does to the rest there right guys I do apologize my voice is starting to go I do apologize let's try and make it to the end of the video now next up they've told us about Scarbrand and I know a few people have said he's a little bit lackluster for what he is and I think GW have heard that enough that they've taken on board and they've changed up his rule set a bit so when you've got the embodiment of rage you want rules to show that he is just rage incarnate so as we've got changes to him let's have a look at the first change which is total carnage as an ad here we go guys we've got total carnage do not use the attack sequence for an attack made with carnage instead roll a dice the target unit suffers eight mortal wounds if the roll is equal to or greater than the carnage value shown on the damage table I can't show you the damage table because they haven't provided it. If the roll is a 6, the target units have a 16 mortal wounds instead. So, 16 mortal wounds, if you're lucky enough to roll a 6. It's, again, as I stress with everything that's a 6, it's not a game changer. It's not something to rely upon. But that's nice. It's if you were up against I don't know a Star Drake, or you've got got him up against your the enemy's big hitters to slow him down. You have got a chance. You're taking him out. They've gone off the field, and he's free to rampage into the next into the next unit. So yes, yeah, Scarbrand is amazing in this edition. So probably going to see a lot more of him but I think I'm just going to go with a basic uh, blood letter myself because I don't like the goatee I don't it just looks stupid right guys I know I've been fanboying out but this is the part of the show where I gotta say I think GW tried to pull a dirty on us I'd like to think that they didn't realise this was already a thing but it comes across like they were trying a little bit too hard with skull taker because they're trying to say that he's had a new model it's going to be big new changes with him yeah we all know he's going to have a points increase but the first thing they come up with is um decapitating strike and here it is i'm going to give you 10 seconds and you tell me it was different to this than what we previously got. Nothing. Absolutely nothing has changed. It's still the same. If you roll a six, because you've got the uh, Slayer Sword, you get three mortal wounds. Nothing has changed on this, and they're trying to push this as... A brand new rule I think that was a little bit sneaky we deserve better than our GW I'm really sorry that that's a little bit uncalled for but I'm gonna forgive you with the command ability that he gets which is and here's the command ability heads must roll this command ability is you can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly blood letters unit wholly within 12 inches of a friendly model with the command ability. Until the end of that phase, you can re-roll wounds of one for attacks made by that unit. Right, that's a good uh, good rule in my mind, that is, because... He's buffing up your blood letters, which in your head you were thinking it's just the foot the foot troops. It's going to be the guys with the swords running forward. But 
it's also useful at times for say you're uh, on your own except for a unit of skull cannons if you're that strange one that takes a unit of them so that means because they take more well i say they take more it's harder for them to hit so any rolls of ones you're giving yourself a bit of a chance or if you really want to make your crushes unstoppable chuck it on them let them run in after murderous charge they're just going to go in and slaughter everyone so it's a very versatile trait for say demons not so much for say the slaughter tribes but for demons this is quite diverse that people are probably not going to see straight away but all depends on the situation granted the most common denominator is it's the combat phase so that said I think this is fantastic another reason I will be picking up a new skull taker model but what do you guys think do you think this is a good rule am I thinking too much of it is this useless tell me in the comment section Denominator? Denominator? Yeah, that's right, yeah, I can say it. That, yeah, I couldn't say it just now. Right, guys, anyway, thank you for uh, tuning in. Two seconds. Another swig of the tea. Thank you again for listening in. Thank you for taking the time to go through the article with me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. If you've got any opinions on what we've gone over please put them in the comment section below and i'm going to say it as per usual please leave a like on the uh on the channel because it makes us be seen share us amongst your friends so we can get our subscriber count up because we want to be out to more people so we can show them how to play blood bowl on the table and not just on computer computer screens we also in future are looking to do aos battle reports so if you guys want to see that please get on to the ronda gaming club to allow us to do that if you guys are telling them that you want to see that perhaps they will let us do it at the club anyway it's that part of the show i've got a shell we've got a teesprings account like i've said at the beginning where we're going to start putting up RBBL uh, merch as well so look out for that you're supporting the channel and you're getting a little bit of something back so it's always a good place to go the other thing we got is we got PayPal and Patreon I'm going to say thank you in advance if you can spare, spare a few shekels if you can't just share us amongst your friends that is fantastic because this is a community channel done by the community for the community so guys i hope you enjoyed the show again please let me know your thoughts on this am i reading into too much into gw trying to pull a dirty on us with the uh, skull takers decapitating strike let me know so till the next video i shall see you again adios